What's up, Seeky Nation? Sneaky Pete here, back with all the news after week number eight in our San Francisco 49ers franchise. The 49ers were on a bye week this week, but we have a lot to go over. No practice this week. Instead, we are going to focus on everything happening around the NFL. First and foremost, let's go ahead and get started with our games of the week. First up, we are going to have the Jags taking on the Tennessee Titans. 35 to 32 is the score. The Jags improved to four and three on the season. The Titans fall to three and five. Pretty solid game from Blake Bortles. Four touchdowns, one interception. The rookie for the Titans getting a touchdown run. Henry making it happen. Rashard Matthews, a pretty solid game. Over 100 yards receiving for Green Sr. as well. A uh, pretty good game through the air for him. McCourty leading the way in tackles with nine sacks. We have two and a half for Carl Klug. McClain, or McCain going to get involved. Fowler Jr. getting involved as well. Cersei and Amukamara with the interceptions on the day. Fumbles forced. We have one Roy Miller, Cyprian, and Stafford each. Um, Miller and Cyprian are going to recover theirs. 23-10. to 10, The Bengals are going to take down the Redskins. The Bengals improving to 4-3-1. and one. The Redskins falling to 3-5. and five. Hill with two rushing touchdowns to help his team get the victory. And Giovanni Bernard not getting used by the Bengals hardly at all. Eifert going to lead the way with 65 yards receiving there. Uh, sacks. Let's see what we have here. And it is going to be led by Carlos Dunlap. Two and a half. Geno Atkins getting one and a half on the day. Interceptions. Dre Kirkpatrick. The only pick of the day. Fumbles forced. We have two. Geno Atkins and Ray Maluga going to force the fumbles. Neither of which would be recovered. 25 to 3. The Chiefs taking down the Colts here. And this is a blowout. 5 and 2 for the Chiefs. The Colts fall to 4 and 4. And Andrew Luck is struggling. Zero touchdowns. Six interceptions on the day. They were actually doing a pretty good job with Scott Tolzien playing quarterback for the Colts, but things are going south quickly. Not a good game for Andrew Luck at all. Justin Houston leading the way in tackles. He'd also have a sack of uh, Keem Ayers with a sack as well. Interceptions, two for Terrence Mitchell, two for Marcus Peters, one for Justin Houston, C.O. Moore, and Ron Parker on the day. Fumbles forced. To go with those six interceptions, Langford, Johnson, and Adams, and they would have a fumble as well. So seven turnovers for the Colts. They're 38 to seven. The Bucks take down the Raiders. The Bucks improved to four and three on the year. The Raiders falling to three and five. No touchdowns. Three interceptions for Derek Carr. A lot of interceptions being thrown this week by the looks of things. Leading the way, 115 yards for Andre Holmes there. Doug Martin would have a receiving touchdown. Defensively, Connor leading the way with 12 tackles. One and a half sacks for Goldson. One for the rookie Ward there. And a bunch of players going to be splitting a sack here. Interceptions, Burner, McDougald, Conte, and Robinson going to have the interceptions on the day for the Bucks defense there. Fumbles force, none. It'll be 33-21, to the Saints taking down the Seahawks. The Saints improved to 3-4, and four. the Seahawks falling to 3-4. and four. Drew Brees throwing three touchdowns, also three interceptions, though no touchdowns through the air for Russell Wilson. He did run for one, though. Colby Fleener over 102 yards, one touchdown for him. Sneed going to have a touchdown, as well as the rookie from Ohio State, Michael Thomas. Chancellor leading the way in tackles, one and a half sacks for Tap there. One for Bennett, Fairley, and Jordan as well. Interceptions, two for Richard Sherman, one for Cam Chancellor. Uh, DJ Moore getting an interception as well for the Saints there. Fumbles force none on the day. 24-16, the Lions going to take down the Texans. The Lions improved a 7-1 and one on the season. Not a great game from Stafford there, though. Did enough to get the win. The Texans fall to 3-5 and five on the year. And J.J. Watt going to have a monster game today. It wasn't enough for the win, but he is certainly trying. We will check this out in a second. Levy leading the way in tackles. And look at Watt, 10 tackles. Four sacks on the day. Cushing, Anza, each getting a sack as well. A few players going to split some sacks there. Interceptions, we have Andre Heil and Jonathan Joseph making some plays. Fumbles forced. We have one for Joseph, one for Watt. Kevin Johnson going to force one as well. The only one being recovered by the Lions there, though. 24-21, to the Jets send the Browns to another loss. The Browns started off really well this season, but have been struggling as of late. The Jets improved to 4-4. Four and four. The Browns falling to 5-3 and three. again. They were looking really good to get things going this year, but... Recent weeks have not been as kind to them. Brandon Marshall, three touchdowns on the day for the Jets. Sacks, we have 
One for Greg Hardy. That's the only sack of the day. Williams and Revis each getting an interception today. And then fumbles forced. We have one by Wilkerson. Nobody will recover this one. We have a 37-34 shootout in Atlanta. The Falcons going to take down the Packers. The Falcons improved to 5-3. and three. The Packers fall to 4-2 and two on the year in the battle between two of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. Jordy Nelson, two touchdowns. Julio Jones, two touchdowns, 126 yards for him. Defensively, Ryan leading the way with 10 tackles, sacks, one for Claiborne, one for Vic Beasley Jr. Interceptions, Neil, the rookie out of Florida, going to have the only interception of the day. Fumbles, force, none on the day. 45-35, to 35, the Bills going to beat the Patriots, and the Patriots continuing to struggle. The Bills improving to 6-1 and one on the year. The Patriots falling to 3-4-1, and one. certainly not where they anticipated being coming into this season, and what could very well be Tom Brady's last. We don't know if he's going to play another year. Sammy Watkins with three touchdowns on the day for him, a monster game. Ninkovich leading the way in tackles, sacks. We have Ninkovich, Sheard, Branch, Lawson, and Williams. So Shaq Lawson, the rookie, going to get involved there. Two interceptions for Darby, one for Brown, one for Malcolm Butler as well. Fumbles forced. Won by Chris Long. He would recover it as well. 45-31. to The Chargers go to beat up on the Broncos. The Chargers improved us 7-1 on the year. The Broncos falling to 2-6. and six, Really struggling without their quarterbacks from last year. Phil Rivers did throw four interceptions on the day. Paxton Lynch, four touchdowns. Only two interceptions on the day. But um, was not enough to get the victory. Even with the Broncos defense helping them out. Forcing that uh, Chargers offense to do a lot of fumble. Or a lot of uh, turnovers, I should say. Brandon Marshall leading the way, 13 tackles, sacks, two for Joey Bosa, who continues to impress. And the Chargers did a great job getting pressure on Paxton Lynch there. Two interceptions for Chris Harris Jr., a whole bunch of guys getting involved in interceptions this week, though. Bumbles forced, one for TJ Ward, one for Tarpanen neither of which would be recovered. 27 to 21. The Panthers going to take down the Cardinals. The Panthers improving to 3 and 4. The Cardinals continue to struggle at 1 and 7 in the season. These are supposed to be the two teams in the NFC that have the best chance of making it to the Super Bowl and neither of which are playing very well at all right now. Certainly not where they anticipated being. Luke Keekley 11 tackles on the day. Campbell with two sacks short with one and a half on the day. Uh, interceptions, we have one for Ben Wickery, one for Worley, and one for McLean. The Panthers defense getting it done there. Fumbles forced, we have one for Chandler Jones, one for Delaire. And uh, fumbles recovered, Delaire would have the only one there. 31-24, to the Cowboys take down the Eagles. The Cowboys improving to 5-2 and two despite starting a rookie running back and a rookie quarterback. The Eagles falling to 2-5 and five in the battle between the two rookie quarterbacks here. Two of them anyway. Uh, 69 yards receiving for Jason Witten. 96 for Des Bryant on the day. Morris going to have a receiving touchdown. Tolick leading the way with 11 tackles. Two sacks for Connor Barwin. One and a half for Thornton on the day. Interceptions. We have one for Sean Lee. One for McLeod Jr. Fumbles forced. What do we have here? Uh, one by Fletcher Cox. One by Barry Church. They would each recover. And then the last game, 27 to 24. The Bears taking down the Minnesota Vikings. The Bears improved to 3-5 and five on the year. The Vikings falling to four and three not a great game from Adrian Peterson but really just didn't run the ball all that much he had a good yards per carry but look at Jarius Wright 10 catches 219 yards and a touchdown for him doing a great job through the air Dunbar leading the way with 12 tackles uh one and a half sacks for McPhee one for Young interceptions we have uh one for Sandejo uh, there I, uh, Kyle Fuller with one. I think Williams with one. I missed the third one. I apologize. Uh, fumbles recovered, and that is going to be McPhee recovering the only fumble. On to players of the week. Doug Martin, 27 carries, 122 yards, one rushing touchdown, one receiving touchdown. Richard Sherman, seven tackles, two interceptions. J.J. Watt, 10 tackles, four sacks, and a fumble force. And then Blake Bortles, 28 of 43, four passing touchdowns for him. He also threw an interception to go with his 352 yards. Phillip Rivers leading the way in the MVP race early on. Matthew Stafford, two. Tyrod Taylor, three. You know what? I think I said 
said the Bills were 6-1. and one. They are actually 7-1. and one. I apologize for that mistake, but three 7-1 and one teams, the Chargers, the Lions, and the Bills right now, all getting some work done. We're going to go through the uh, yearly awards pretty quickly here. We'll start off with the AFC and Le'Veon Bell leading the way. The Steelers only 4-3, and three, but their offense has been phenomenal. We will get to this a little bit later as we check out the sacks. J.J. Watt leading the Defensive Player of the Year right now. But we're seeing some rookies there as well. Paxton Lynch, Offensive Rookie of the Year for the AFC. Derrick Henry, two. Washington Sharp Fuller rounding out the top five there. Coleman Miller, Kessler, Henry, and Charles rounding out the top ten. So a lot of players from a few different teams there. Agba leading the way. And defensive player or defensive rookie of the year, Joey Bosa coming in at number two. And Ogba must be having an incredible season because Joey Bosa has been killing it. We have noticed him in the stats. We have noticed Ogba as well, but we'll have to keep more of an eye on that. Tom Brady, uh, best quarterback, despite his team struggling right now, not getting a lot of help. Le'Veon Bell, the best running back, and this is by far, I'll tell you right now. Again, we're going to check out these stats later, but he is having an historic season right now. Demarius Thomas, best wide receiver despite his team's record at 2-6 and six right now. Pretty shocking to see that. Offensive line, who other than Joe Thomas leading the way for the 5-3 and three Cleveland Browns. Defensive line, J.J. Watt, of course, despite his team being 2-6 and six overall as well. Those signings definitely not helping out their team a whole lot early on in this season. Linebacker is going to be a Tachu for the 7-1 and one Chargers. I, I always wonder if I say that wrong. Ogba going to come in at number 4 on that list, though. And then Chris Harris Jr., 2-6 and six Denver Broncos. They have a lot of players representing this list despite not a great record. Suck up leading the way as uh, AFC kicker for the Titans there. Let's go ahead and head over to the NFC and Offensive Player of the Year. Cam Newton at for the 4-3 and three Panthers. And Ezekiel Elliott going to make this list as a rookie. Dak Prescott as well. Defensive Player of the Year, DeAndre Levy for the 7-1 and one Lions going to make this list. Uh, Darius Slate Jr. there as well. Offensive Rookie of the Year, the first two both going to the Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott continue to get it done. No 49ers on this list. That is disheartening. De Defensive Rookie of the Year, Bullard leading the way for the 3-5 and five Bears. And again, we are not seeing any of our rookies here. DeForest Buckner, we were hoping, would make some kind of list, but he hadn't been getting a whole lot of sacks. Matthew Stafford, Stafford leading the way for best quarterback in the NFC. The 7-1 and one Lions continue to get it done. We did see Blaine Gabbert make the list there, though. And then Carlos Hyde is going to be on this list as well. So we're finally getting some players represented. Maybe not as good as we'd like them to, but still making it happen. No wide receivers on this list. We didn't do a great job there. Offensive line and Joe Staley will make this list for the 49ers. Their defensive line led by Connor Barwin for the 2-5 and five Eagles. A few Vikings represented here. Um, no 49ers. Again, linebacker DeAndre Levy leading the way here. And not seeing a 49er again, definitely disheartening. Of course, our defense has been struggling. And then Sam Shields going to lead the way for the Packers in terms of best defensive back. Matt Bryant going to be the best kicker. But Phil Dawson for the 49ers right behind him. Let's go ahead and check out the stats for the 49ers. Blaine Gabbert just under 2,000 yards. 15 touchdowns. He has thrown 12 interceptions on the season. He's moving the ball better than we thought he would, but he's turning the ball over more than we'd like. Carlos Hyde, 4.4 yards to carry, 660 yards. Only one touchdown on the season for him. We definitely need to get our running game more involved. That's actually what we are planning on relying on now. Carlos Hyde has been good out of the backfield in terms of catching the ball. Not getting a whole lot of yards there, though. We have four receivers all bunched up in the middle there, but nobody really standing out for our team at all. Anthony Davis is struggling, allowing four sacks. Two for Trent Brown, only one for Joe Staley. Antoine Bethea leading the way in tackles here. For sacks, leading the way, two and a half for Aaron Lynch. Chris Davis with two and a half. Quentin Dial, two and a half. Two for Brooks. Few players listed here with one. Um, we've done a decent job of getting pressure on the quarterback. Maybe not as much as most teams, but we're not getting a whole lot of players standing out. We have four interceptions on the season. We definitely need to do a better job of getting turnovers. As you can see, only forcing two fumbles. Now, a few of these have been glitched out that I've noticed. As you can see, we recovered three, even though we only forced two. Demetrius McCray getting a block there. Aaron Lynch with a safety. And then our only touchdown coming from Antoine Bethea uh, defensively. Let's go ahead and check out the stats from around the NFL 
after we do this actually let's check out our special team stats we're going to go through quickly uh no punts that's a, another glitch there that i'm seeing man these madden glitches they always happen in the stat sheet anyway nfl stats here we go tom brady leading the way 2300 yards matt ryan right behind him aaron Rodgers coming in at third brady leading the way 20 touchdowns nine interceptions andy dalton 18 touchdowns 17 for philip rivers stafford with 15 roethlisberger 15 gabbert is going to be 15 as well so he is pretty high on that list for the 49ers however he is also going to lead the interception race Derek carr coming in at number two but Derek carr throwing less touchdowns than interceptions and then levy on bell i told you about it look at this six and a half yards a carry 15 touchdowns on the season levy on bell crushing the nfl competition right now the next best is number or only eight touchdowns levy on bell actually on pace to set the single season record for most rushing touchdowns having an unbelievable season receiving the ball randall cobb leading the way with 54 catches golden tate coming in at number two with 52 uh touchdowns julian edelman and demarius thomas each with 10 and then antonio brown levy on bell's teammate with eight on this list so again the Steelers offense really doing a great job of throwing points up on the board, but their defense has been struggling, and that's why they have a pedestrian record as of now. Defensively, Buchanan leading the way in tackles, the former safety converted linebacker there. 14 sacks for J.J. Watt. I'm pretty sure he is out sacked the entire 49er team right now, having a monster season. Barwin, Mack, Quinn, Dunlap, Vernon also on this list. And then Joey Bosa, the rookie with eight and a half sacks as well. And then here is Ogba, the other rookie leading the way with uh, six sacks for the Browns there. Six interceptions for Harris Jr. And his teammate Akib Tlaib with four. Revis with four as well. Um, and again, those guys all have as many or more interceptions than the entire 49er team. A bunch of guys going to lead the way with three forced fumbles here. Recoveries, two for CJ Mosley, two for Ndamukong Sue. Blocks, we're going to have quite a few players listed here with one as well. Um, Delmas uh, ending that list for the Browns. One safety, again, glitching out our player. And then the defensive touchdowns on the year, a few players with one also glitching out the 49ers guy. They always do this on these lists. I don't know why. Kicking suck up 15 of 15 along of 54. The long on the season by Justin Tucker, 58 yards. He's only 7 of 10 right now. Letcher leading the way in punts there. Danny Woodhead has a uh, kick return for a touchdown. Odell Beckham Jr. with a kick return for a touchdown. A few others here as well. Punt returns for a touchdown. The list not quite as long, but we are still going to have five guys on the list led by Sammy Watkins, AJ Green, Amari Cooper. Why are these guys returning kicks? Let's check out the standings. The Chargers and Bills leading the way for the AFC, both at 7-1 and one right now doing a great job the Ravens at the bottom of the list one and six the NFC the Lions at seven and one so no undefeated teams left the Cowboys coming in at number two five and two the Rams also five and two on the list the rest of the uh NFC West really struggling the Seahawks 49ers and Cardinals all with a losing record the Cardinals especially at one and seven struggling Nick Agu out of Michigan State six one cornerback uh, seems solid. Really not feeling Ben Bethay. We took a look at him, but that man coverage is not as good as we'd like. And then Devin Gaddis, 6'2", uh, cornerback. Decent fifth-round player here. We might have to keep an eye on him. Uh, his press isn't wonderful, but we can make do in the fifth round. Drew Brees going to lead the way for the Saints in this next game. Mark Ingram and C.J. Spiller at running back. John Kuhn at fullback. Wide receiver Brandon Cooks. Willie Sneed the fourth. Michael Thomas. We saw him get a touchdown in that last game. At tight end, Kobe Fleener having an outstanding season for the uh, Saints there. Armstead at left tackle. A great left tackle to have, actually. Max Unger going to be at center form. The right side, not as good as the left side, but they do have Zach Streif here, or Strife, I'm sorry. Cameron Jordan at left end, Paul Kruger at right end, but overall, the downfall of this Saints team is this defense. Not a good defense at all, and the 49ers offense is going to have to find a way to get some points up on the board. Our defense has struggled a lot this season, and Drew Brees is a guy that can pick our defense apart. So if we're going to have any shot at this game, our offense is going to have to take advantage of this week Saints defense. It should be a good game, though, guys. That is going to be it for the Week 8 News. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button. It does help me out a lot. I know this one was a little bit different.
But we did have a lot to get through, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time. Later.